welcome to another Synfig tutorial and today I'm going to be taking a look at something that I thought that I did before well uh, I touched on it in another video but I'm gonna have a full video for it here and that is how to use um, Synfig as well how to try and incorporate a library system in Synfig Okay, now Synfig doesn't have a library. Well, it does, um, technically it does, but uh, this library doesn't function the way that a traditional library functions. The library that I'm talking about is um, a place where you can store all of your, your files or, for example, if you're working on a project and you have a lot of props, you could store them in the library and then you could pull from the library whenever you need them, okay? So because Synfig doesn't have that, we're going to be using the canvas as a way to do that, right? Now, it's not it's not going to be perfect, but uh, just work along with me and we'll see what we, we can do. All right. So to before we begin, I'm going to create a bunch of um, what I call stuff to put inside of the library, right? So let's say uh, typically when you have a library, you have um, several folders within that library. So maybe let's say you have, um, for example, images of, I don't know, books. You'd have a folder for books. You'll have a folder for maybe, I don't know, text or fonts or um, clouds, you know, or stuff like that, right? So what I'm going to do is create some stuff and then set up that um, library structure. Uh, so firstly, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use some simple shapes here. So let's say I have this circle here and I want to create, I wanna create um, a directory that houses several different types of circles, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this in a folder and I'm gonna create, let me just duplicate this and create another type of circle. and Again, I'm just using circles as an example here. All right, so let's say we have this one here. So this is a different um, circle, but basically like a, the outline of a circle, All right? So here we have two circles. I'm just gonna create one more, um, going working with an odd number here. And uh, maybe this circle is a different color. Maybe this. And uh, yeah, maybe it's smaller. Okay. So we have we don't have three different. Um, let's call this three different objects. And let me just rename this. So circle one. I'm gonna call it circle one and circle two and circle three. Circle two and circle three. Circle three. And there we go. Okay, so I want to put the next thing that I want to do is once I have all of my um, files that I want to be a part of the same directory um, within the library, I would have to put each of these in a group. And let me just call this, uh, I'm gonna use ca all caps, circle. Okay. So so we have three different circles here. All right, our three different objects. Now, um, let's go ahead and go into the properties of the overall group here. So, and then go over to canvas, right click, export value, and let me call this, uh, well, using all caps again, circle. You know, the, the name is up to you, but I think it, it would make sense to um, label it whatever the, the contents of the um, the folder is or are or is. All right, so click export. And now we have um, we have this in our that what I'm, I'm going to call our library. Technically, it's our canvas. So if we look over here in the um, canvas browser, and we open this up, we see that we have the circle. Now, cool thing about this is that we can delete this folder and our circles are still there. So right click here, go to other and click to create a group. Well, we could have, and I, 
I just went the long road, but we could have technically, well, let me just do that again. I thought that we could have created a, a group down here, but never mind. I, I, you need a layer in order to create a group here. But anyway, so once you have a group, just come over into the canvas section here of a group and choose your file there, All right? And then you're able to switch between any of these that you want, all right? So that is pretty cool right there. Uh, a good rule, of, a good rule to follow is to make sure that all your objects are within the same position, so that when you call upon those um, that group, um, you can you're able to switch them out without them being all over the place. Like for example, one over here and one over here, right? You want them to be in the same location. All right. Now this is cool, but we can take this even further, right? Um, if we were to, let's say we're working on a car. So let me just turn this off and create a car or something that looks like a car real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Something like this, go here. All right, so let's assume that this is a car, all right? And we have, yeah, so we have a car here and we wanted a bunch of wheels. Well, we wanted two wheels to be on our car here. Let me actually scale this down because I think it's a bit too big. All right, yeah, so let's say I wanted um, some wheels to go on my car. Now, I know that in my library, I have, we're, we're going to assume, or we're going to imagine that the circles are wheels, or car tires, okay? <laughs> Just work with me here. Uh, so yeah, let's say we have a we have some tires in our library. All we need to do is just create a new folder. By the way, the reason why I'm not um, clicking on this folder here is because this layer would automatically go inside that folder, right? And I don't want that. So let me undo. So that's why I'm going. I'm right clicking uh, and go to new layer, other group, and then now I'll have access to my tires. Voila. Now I can just simply move into position here. Right. And then I simply turn off the ones that I the ones that I don't want. Right? And then of course I could duplicate this entire group here and just move it over to the front here. But uh, I mean, as I mentioned before, you you have to turn off the ones that you don't want. And that, that's that's adding more work to to um to what you're doing, right? And the whole concept of having a library is to save you time. So, what if? Let me actually delete this. All right. So, what if we grouped all of these inside of a switch? So, if I select all of them, right click, and go to group layers into switch, we now have a switch layer, right? And the cool thing about this is that we can now, whenever we um, bring back our uh, our circle canvas, our, our, our objects from the library, once you click on the switch, you can come over here, go to active layer name, and then you can select whichever wheel, remember there are wheels now, <laughs> whichever wheel you want, okay? And they will still be in the same position because initially we created them in the same the same position. And now what we can do is we can when we duplicate well when we duplicate the group here, move it over. It's easy for us to actually go to our switch and change out our circle. All right? Notice how they all change. Cool. That's pretty cool. I think that's because they are the, the same switch. It's referencing the, the same switch. So they they actually um, change together. So that's really, really cool, right? Um, but we can take this as even a step further now. Uh, what if we were to separate, set up controls so that uh, whenever we drag in our circles, we wouldn't have to come over here into the properties and change this out. We could just have a control that change change it that change out whichever object um is there that would be awesome i'm not going to show you how to do that because you know i have, I have tutorials on controls 
so you can I think you can figure out how to incorporate it now what would be even cooler if is this was a plugin so if you you know if you had a plugin here that called all of your objects in your library and you could also continuously add objects into the library but uh, if you want to have a basic library setup uh, this is the way to go and um, once you're done setting up your library just keep in mind that even if you delete the group the um, the contents are still there so all you would need to do is just to save this file right so let me go ahead and save this I'm gonna save this uh, let me just call call this library click OK right so whenever you want to um, access the contents of your library you just use this file so let's say I close this and then I I'm going to start a new project I will just use this library file here and uh, I would I would um, do what I need to do so I'm just go here again so I'll do what I need to do and then I will just save this as another project so maybe a uh, test project or whatever the name of your new project would be so you'd save that out and because the library is a part of um, this whole setup here the library would be available in your new project right and then you could uh, you could put you could put the library file somewhere where you know as a backup just in case you you um, you need to call upon it again for some reason right so you wouldn't go to start a new project inside a library folder right you just duplicate it each time you, you want to start a new project okay uh, so I hope this helps you and um, yeah well it should so you can create your props uh, you can create different groups and you can create a canvas for each of those groups all right and then so within within that library you would have all of your props and it would be cool if we could you know drag and drop them within the canvas area here but you know of course we can't but um this is a a cool way for you to set up your own library something to note is that you can't you can store you can store a rigged character in the canvas area however when you call it into the the, the work area right here the the um the bones if it's rigged using bones the bones will be disconnected from the joints so you'd have to repair in them okay so um, unfortunately so I wouldn't recommend um, trying to store your characters in our library system here okay and uh, yeah I, that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.